And uh, I'd like to ask you what drove you to write that book? I know about the coup in Bolivia, but uh, also what drove you to write this book and release it so fast because it came out just months after uh, the coup, right? And uh, what audience did you have in mind when writing that book? There's a lot to say there. And, I, I, and thanks for that, because that's a really, um, that's a really precise question, because there is, there is a shift in, in both um, form and audience. And I want to say something personally, but I'm also saying something to writers, which is that give yourself time to mature. Um, it's taken me a long time to learn to write in the way I, I now want to write. Um, many years ago, when I was a young journalist, I happened to run into Galliano. And the first time I ran into Galliano, I, I hadn't planned it. I, I was in a place and there was Eduardo Galliano and I almost died. Um, there are two writers that I admire more than life itself. One was uh, Kapuczynski. Um, Kapuczynski was this great Polish journalist who was the Polish um, uh, agency's foreign correspondent. And he's his writings is what made me want to become a journalist because, you know, right, reading Kapuczynski, you know, la landing in Delhi in the middle of the night, spoke only Polish, you know, didn't speak really English, didn't speak any Indian language. I mean, and then just was able to understand things, reading his book about Ethiopia, reading his book about Iran, very inspired. But Galliano, Galliano is like the prince of writers, you know descended from the heaven of writing and, and came up with, you know, not words, but honey. Uh, it's honey on a page, you know. Uh, and I was lucky. I got to know him a little bit. And then I asked him one day, how is it you write so beautifully about such horrible things? And I said, that's what strikes me the most, you know, particularly days and nights. Um, I don't know what the title is in, in Spanish or in Portuguese, but it's the book about um, political violence in South America, um, about the torture and so on. And, you know, he writes that line in there that South America's great comparative advantage is we are the world leaders in torture. And we've, you know, and so on. It's, very, it's a cruel line. It's a cruel line. And he's thinking about the military coup in Brazil in 64. He's thinking about the 1970s coup in, in, in the southern cone and so on. And his answer was very straightforward. He was like, look, torture itself is, is, is torturous um, and is terrible. Why would you want to replicate that in the page? You want to have in it something other than that. So, you know, I, why did I say it takes time for a writer? Um, as a younger person, I read a lot, I researched a lot, and I, I have always been interested in summarizing the work in the academy. So when, if you read the Darker Nations, which will come out in Portuguese this year, when you read the Darker Nations, uh, there's some original research, some chapters, the chapter on, on Belgium, on the League Against Imperialism meeting. There's some original research on the chapter on the non-aligned meeting in Belgrade in 1961, 60 years ago this year. Um, there's some original research on Singapore. I, I went to the archive and read things, but a lot of it is reading of vacuuming an enormous amount of literature, secondary literature, and trying to shape it. Because I feel like, and I felt this for a long time, that there's something undemocratic about the way academic work is, um, is presented. So, you know, academic work is difficult. People spend a lot of time reading literature, vast amounts of literature, doing research. And then like in any guild, right? A language is constructed for the guild. It's, it's fine. I don't have a problem with that. And the, the guild then develops knowledge. But um, just like the guild of magicians, somebody has to steal the magic and go to the people and say, look, look at what I can do. I can make things disappear. And, you know, that magician that goes to the fair to entertain people is different from the druid, the magician who's in the forest where they create potions and then they come out and they, they don't tell you what they're doing. So those magicians in the forest, the druids, that's the academics. And I felt I want to be the clown that steals some of that stuff and goes to the fair and says, look at this, look at the, if I throw this in the air, it becomes green and so on. And that's what I did with Darker Nations. It's a lot of academic work, very good work, reshaped a little bit 
and cast for a larger audience. Now, in time, over time, I've come to realize that there is a discourse that exists. There is a, a cliche that exists. And maybe it's true that young people, even young um, militants, young activists, militants, whatever word one uses, fighters for justice, etc. They say they don't read. There's a statement made, they don't read. And statement made, well, it's all, you know, social media and so on. I don't like that attitude. I feel like we have to think differently. Um, it's not that people don't read, it's how might they read. So I thought then, let's create a form of text that people might read. And so what I've tried to do in both um, both uh, the, East, the you know uh, uh, the Red Star over the Third World that was really the first attempt at this, Washington was second. How can we write a text with very short chapters, with punchy language, shorter sentences, vivid descriptions, so that somebody who's used to Instagram, who's used to TikTok videos, can devour text because if a chapter is going to take you three hours to read or two hours to read or even an hour you lose interest so can i break up a book into short sections where each section is like a TikTok video and then you just scroll so the form of washington bullets essentially is an analogy analogy to social media consumption you you read one section and scroll and then you can put the book down and say, wow, that was interesting and come back, open it, read it and scroll and maybe scroll again. And it's OK, actually, if you just scroll two, three and go ahead. How do you construct a text where if you've missed one of the pictures, you still get the thread? So I've, I've been thinking a lot about bringing the form of social media into the text world that we produce, because I believe you can't just create a set of videos on what I wrote in Washington. You need to have the text there. You need some evidence. You need something there that's longer. But I want to derive something from what social media has done to our mode of seeing, our way of seeing has to be, uh, I think, translated. So I said it takes time. You've got to really let yourself, you know, I'm using the word mature, but I don't mean mature in terms of personality. I mean, as a writer. Um, and so I feel like now I'm at a place where I'm able to experiment with form and content because I don't feel like, feel like I have anything to prove. 